Hello and welcome to Kingsdown School Creative by Media, Unit R081, Lesson 11. We're looking at the properties and limitations of file formats for audio and moving images. Now by properties, these are the attributes and features of the file formats, how they work, uh, what compression they use, etc. And the limitations are those things that the file format cannot do or are not best suited to do. Now we will cover basic animation as your film animation, computer aided animation, um, and all the audio files that go with that. So let's have a look. So the objective for today's lesson is to be able to understand the properties and limitations of our formats for both audio and moving images. Obviously, this is uh, because we do use them quite a lot in iMedia, and obviously we need to understand how they're also used in uh, movies, architecture, engineering, and the gaming industries. Now, our success criteria for today will be that you know how to create content featuring both audio and moving images in the correct formats and the file types for the task that you're undertaking. So, why do we need to look at file formats and their limitations? Well, obviously because the exam board have told us to, and it says there, you know, learners must be taught the properties and limitations for audio and moving images for both video and animation. And of course, because we need to know how to create these things. Now, when most people think about animation, the first thing they think about obviously is animation in films or um, animation um, in sort of animated films themselves, rather than necessarily a lot of the other industries in which uh, animation is widely used. And therefore, we need to have a look at things like architecture and engineering. In architecture, it's used quite a lot, uh, certainly for building of houses, um, so they can see how they are going to look. Um, certainly within the automotive engineering industries, uh, both within um, Formula One and most type of manufacturers, um, having parts, uh, as you can see here, uh, rendered so they can see how they're actually going to look, whether they're actually going to do the job that they're supposed to do, and then they can start thinking about stress tolerances and all the rest of it. So it's a, a, a key area for a lot of manufacturing processes. So animation industries, big six. Film and television are obvious ones there. Architecture and engineering, and obviously engineering covers the automotive engineering industries there. Video games and media marketing. So let's be sure, what is animation in the first place? Animation is obviously um, moving and it's applying motion to otherwise still 2D and 3D images. Now, the way in which that is done to create that illusion of 3D you know, moving image is quite varied. You can do it with a simple um, uh, sheets of paper if you put them all together and then uh, flick through them and you've got a, an image on there that changes slightly on each page then obviously that will look like it is moving you can do that um, with stop frame so when you look at uh, a, a plasticine model for instance as Nick Parks used uh, for things like Wallace and Gromit where each one of the models then moves very very slightly for each frame and they have to do each frame individually Obviously, that's very painstaking work, very effective. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the, the more modern uh, CGI, where uh, an image is created on a computer screen and then can be manipulated on that screen, can be made to move uh, very quickly or very slowly, etc. Um, as well as uh, using things like um, what they call uh, black actors. Uh, and that's where an actor takes uh, on the role of the um, particular um, character that is required but they do so wearing a special costume which has a number of dots on it which is tracked by a computer when the um, actor is actually filmed using special camera and that then it has a, another um, CGI so a computer generated image pasted over the top but then of course the uh, uh, image that's pasted over the top takes on all the movements of the character made by the actor. 
So that's uh, another way of creating a, a, an animation. So let's have a look at uh, animation in use. And this is uh, uh, within the uh, engineering industries, as in the construction industry. And as you can see here, they're animating the procedures that they would actually make a hat. If you have a look at the top there, the timeline. So this is being mapped against, if you like, a work plan we've seen plans before, and this is just a way of mapping out exactly what they're going to do week by week. So by the time they got to six weeks into this build, they're expecting to have the first floor done and the uh, um, supports for the floor for the second floor going in. And by week eight, they expect to have all the, wee, all the walls done. Um, end of week eight, perhaps. Uh, finish a week nine there or the roofing to be in and then probably by the end of week 11 they're thinking they're going to have all the windows etc in and the place probably water type maybe a bit after that so maybe week 12 here our window's just going in all 12 there so the glazing is done internally now and I'm just showing you what's going to be going on internally the underfloor heating system going in, etc., staircases, all these things that you might think uh, uh, are done before, they actually don't go in until afterwards. Then finally, fissures fittings, any partition for second floor, etc., etc. And there you have your finished article. And as you can see, that looks pretty lifelike, pretty lifelike. And that's the whole point of using animation within the industry. That's exactly what you want to happen. So let's have a look. Properties and limitations of file formats. On the sheet here, you can see a number of animation file formats. These are quite general ones. These are ones that have been used uh, within the computing industry for, for quite a while. And they are quite well known in lots of instances. I'm sure a lot of you will be um, very familiar with Shockwave Flash and Flash itself, uh, the Adobe uh, Flash file format. Um, some of you may have uh, picked up during uh, work on other units the fact that uh, portable network graphics can actually be um, animated, so that's the APNG at the top there, as well as the GIFs, which we should all know are animated or can be animated. So the graphic interchange format there comes in both. Um, animated or non-animated forms. However, it is also useful to know that there are some uh, proprietary formats which are very popular, and that's on the 3DS uh, thing here. So 3DS Max and Max file formats, as well as the Maya MAs and MBs, uh, together with FBX, do form um, a great portion of the specialist um, animation programs that are used by things like architects and engineers. The engineering industry in terms of automotive tends to be a little bit more application specific. So those will be file formats created by particular um, applications that are used by those people. And then they will probably be um, converted to another one of these more popular formats um, once they've actually been created. So I know for a fact that uh, people like um, the um, uh, Williams F1 team um, use a, a specialist software um, for their um, models and um, engineering. Um, that uh, is not something that's uh, available to anyone else that has been built directly for them. Um, and so they won't actually release that information to anyone else. It is their own application. So let's have a look at uh, some of these properties for audio. Now, audio we don't think of as uh, as being necessarily anything very interesting, but as you can see from this, there are a number of formats, and they have different properties. They can be compressed or uncompressed, just like any other files that we have in computing. They have very specific um, properties and limitations, which make them suitable for doing different things. 
a lot of people would uh, argue that uh, MP3, for instance, is a very good uh, file format. You know, a lot of people listen to MP3s on uh, their portable players, and they think that the sound quality is absolutely fine. However, if you were doing comparisons in quality to something um, like the uh, FLAC um, lossless compressions, and you really looked at what was happening, you would see that actually an MP3 is very, very compressed and is, by comparison, not the best quality. If you were to go to a cinema and they would play you an MP3 over their sound system to go with one of the, the films that you're watching, you'd frankly be very unimpressed. So once again, as with all of these file formats, the main thing to understand is what they are, what they do, what they should be used for, and then make sure that if you're creating anything which has got a sound uh, requirement, that you're using the right kind of quality. For this recording, I've actually recorded in MP3 because this is going to go out obviously as a, a small video and it doesn't necessarily need that big sound um, requirement. So MP3 keeps the file size small for me, and that means you can download it and watch this, hopefully without any any loss of uh, enjoyment, um, but without having to worry about whether you can stream it over the internet or not. So that's a quick look at the audio files. What I would like you to do now is I'd like you to take some time to create um, a table like this in your books and using the information that you've got so far and is going to come for the rest of this presentation um, I would like you to start filling in the table so that you've got a fairly good idea of what formats we have available and what they should be used for whether they're lossy or lossless etc etc so you can either Stop this video now and go off and do that and spend some time going back over what you've seen so far and filling what you've got. Or of course, as ever with my videos, you're quite welcome to wait until the end, then go back and do this and perhaps use the actual PowerPoint or copy the PowerPoint that you've uh, downloaded, hopefully alongside this presentation. And you can then fill in the bits and pieces from there. I will leave that one up to you. Now, having a look at these limitations for film and video, um, formats. Here we do start to get a little bit more technical. The f main thing that I want people to understand here is that the video file formats are for the most part containers. And the containers because actually they have to have something called codecs. Codec is simply a shortened um, version of two words, code and decode and therefore um, you end up with codecs and that is essentially what happens to all of the video. For most of these file containers the codec does the work so it encodes the video, compresses the video and makes it a lot smaller and puts it in a format that a reader uh, can decode the other end as it were so all your um, players or your video players or your media players all have these codecs built into them which is why they use the formats alongside that of course you have the audio stream so if you're talking about a video container it will have a video stream and an audio stream in that same container and they can be mixed up so whilst most people will think that an mp4 is just an mp4 in reality that can use things like H.264 and H.265 and MPG-4 codecs, okay, alongside uh, things like AAC and uh, FLAC um, audio codecs. So it really does depend on exactly what type of codec you're going to use as to what kind of quality of stream you're going to end up with. Most of you will understand that things like AVIs use a uh, very high quality format. It's a bit like the uh, the, the, the TIFF of, of the um, still image world. The AVIs don't compress the stream very much and therefore the file sizes are quite large. The difference is, of course, that then you get a very, very good quality of video. All of these nowadays um, can be converted in anything up to 
uh, are not limited to, in fact, sort of like 120 frames per second. So that again, that although the quality is normally dictated by the um, uh, lateral lines of pixels, I, if you think about that in terms of HD being 1080 lateral lines of pixels on your screen, um, how that looks in reality in terms of how smooth the picture looks okay is actually down to the frames per second so again that's something that you guys need to be aware of when you're dealing with video file formats so the overall resolution which is the hd or 4k or whatever is the number of lateral lines of pixels okay and the smoothness how that video actually looks whether it's choppy or not okay will require you to understand how many frames per second is generally used if you want to do something perhaps in slow motion then you need to be thinking about at least 60 frames per second so when you slow that down you've still got that smoothness smoothness of movement going on obviously compression sizes do take a major um, part of your thinking here um, or should do um, the more compressed the file is the smaller the file size and when we're talking about streaming over the internet obviously we nowadays have a lot better streaming services than we used to but there are still people who do not have you know 50 or 60 megabit connections they might still only be on two or three and in which case you need to think about what portion of the uh, uh, public is going to have that and therefore if you're creating something that's going to be commercially available um, how is that going to work and therefore do you need to have either a much smaller file size or in fact might that be that you might have to chop it up into smaller bits etc etc so that's uh, that's a quick overview again of how the moving images work let's just have a very quick look here this is stop frame animation this is basically taking a number of pictures over a period of time so 720 still photographs as you're seeing and then putting them together and this is effectively how we create any moving image when you're talking about film work all that's happening is that when we say 30 frames per second what that means is you're taking 30 shots so 30 still photographs every second Whereas this obviously is taken over a greater period of time, but you get the idea when it's all stitched together and then played one after another very quickly, this is the effect. So this is 720 still shots. Oh, let's play that now so you can see it. Okay, so that hopefully gave you a bit of an idea of how stop frame animation is done. Video file formats, carrying on with the uh, most popular ones here really. MP4 I've already mentioned and AVI I've already mentioned. Uh, MOV, which is the QuickTime, which was developed by Apple, which is uh, used, uh, I think, still quite extensively and things like, uh, I think FaceTime still uses basically the QuickTime um, codex. Flash, as I said already, that's uh, Adobe's uh, um, file format. And Flash video um, is a little bit like the Flash animation. Uh, it's just, again, um, a video file format or container, which has got those codecs, um, which allow it to create a, a rather small file size of um, animation. Uh, Windows media files, um, uh, what I would call a common use, therefore emailing video previews, etc., to clients. I wouldn't, generally speaking, recommend that would be uh, the file size, uh, file type that you would use for things like creating a you know, video presentation or something like that. Normally, if you just got a small snippet of something to send to somebody just to give them an idea of what you look like and you want to do that over uh, an email or something, then that's the kind of thing that you would do with these. So that's quite a lot of information on that screen, but uh, again, that's on the uh, PowerPoint presentation, so you can read that at your leisure. And we will move on. 
So, this is the homework that uh, will be issued to you. Um, you'll be required, obviously, to answer these questions. And as you can see here, um, identify an appropriate format for the final version of these animated scenes. And when you're answering these sort of questions, you need to be thinking about um, what it is that you're actually going to be doing with it. So in this case, we're talking about a computer game. So within the computer game itself, they're going to have um, a little video clip which is showing the game action. So you need to think about what kind of videos do you watch, perhaps, where you see other people doing these games. So when uh, I'm sure a lot of you have been watching how to play some of the games that you play, you watch other people do them. Uh, what kind of video for our formats do they use to record that? OK, and explaining what factors uh, to be considered when selecting those uh, particular animated scenes, of course. I think we all know there again, quality, what size the file is, how that's going to uh, actually be streamed across the Internet, and perhaps what devices may be uh, applicable in that. TV adverts to be filled in HD, as I said. So HD, you're thinking there, that's pretty much 1080 horizontal lines of uh, of pixels okay how could they reduce that what would they need to do to reduce that we've just said a little bit about the file formats the things that we have to consider what are those are going to be used okay last thing here's some review questions I'd like you now to uh, take a few moments to actually answer those questions pop them on an email to me just so that I know that you have actually uh, listened and uh, watched this video through to the end uh, and then you can go back and do the activity um, in your book which will hopefully be a good revision guide for you on the formats that might be applicable Thanks for watching this. Uh, I'll catch you again in lesson 12, where we'll be looking at uh, the hardware, the techniques and the software used for digitizing documents uh, and creating electronic pre-production documents for our media. Thanks for listening. Bye now.